right, here's another example. A plane flies 300 miles an hour. The wind is blowing out of the southeast at 86 miles an hour, has a bearing of 320. We want to know at what bearing must the plane head in order to have a true course bearing of 14 degrees. All right, let's start by drawing a picture of the situation. Okay, so here's my bearing, my north-south bearing. And I'm just going to draw the plane right there. So here's the plane flying at 300 miles an hour, right? Here's the 300. And then I'm going to do the wind right here, right? So there's the wind. And it has a bearing of 320. So that would be kind of up here because all of this measured from north, that whole degree there is 320, and um, the force of the wind is 86, so here we go, this is the, there we go, so that's the true course, and there's your 14, oops, there's your 14, right, is that how it looks, there we go, 14 degrees right there, okay, so this is the plane, flying at 300 miles an hour, right over here. The wind is blowing out of the southeast. There's your wind out the southeast. It has a bearing of 320 degrees. So it pushes, if you will, the plane over there. So at what bearing do we have to, at what bearing do we have to, oh, okay, this is what we want eventually. See how you have to read this over and over? You really want to know this bearing right here. We'll call that alpha, that whole thing. We want to know that ultimately. So our true course bearing is 14 degrees. All right, let's draw a picture of the situation. Oh, no, we just do that. Let's draw a picture of the triangle. So here's the triangle. So the length of this is 86. The length of this is 300. And again, there is no angle directly in the triangle. All right, so sometimes you need a third picture just with angles in order to get your um, in order to get your angle and triangle. So here is going to be my north south of the plane. Right? And because I have the 14, so let's do that. So here's the 14. 14 degrees. And then here's the north south of the wind. Alright, so if this is 14 degrees, then this is 14 degrees, alternate interior angles. There's those two parallel lines cut by a transverse. All right, but we know that we've got, um, here's the wind. I'm just going to draw the end of the wind. We know the wind is there, right? See, so see how I'm concentrating kind of on this part right here? Okay, this blow up of what I've circled here is what I have right over here. Okay, so this is 14. So the wind, let me say the wind was, um, 320 degrees. Okay, so if we take 360 and we subtract 320, we get 40. So we know we've got 40 right here. Oh, I got another bearing. Look at this. Okay, so let me draw this in magenta. There's the north-south of the um, plane. Here's just another north-south I created at this blow-up area right here. And then here's your north-south of the wind. All of those are parallel. All right, so we said this was 320 degrees. So that makes this 40, because 360 minus 320 is 40. So that makes this 40. So two parallel lines cut by another transverse. All right, and is this whole thing in my triangle? I think this whole thing 
is in my triangle. So 14 plus 40 is going to be 54. So 54 is the angle in my triangle. Alright, so this looks like a law of sines problem, and I eventually want theta. So, look, I can do law of sines because I've got the sine of theta is to the side opposite, which is 86, as the sine of 54 degrees is to the side opposite, which is 300. When you solve for theta, you get 13.4 degrees. We've done that before. All right, so if I want my true bearing, let's go back here. We want this actual bearing. And we found this one is 13.4, so then I have to add them together. So 13 plus 0.4 plus 14, so that gives me 27.4 degrees. There's my original, uh, there's uh, my bearing, um, bearing at which the plane must have. There you go. All right, good problem. Lots of great angle stuff in that.